Hi everyone, today I'm going to give you an example of how to automatize the collection of data from non-conventional sources like directly from a website. We will use Python to scrape the, the website, then we're going to use Amazon Web Services to storage, prepare and transfer the data to our warehouse or database and finally we will use Power BI to connect the data from our database to make a dashboard. A bit of more context here on why did I do this? Actually I applied this to a real like project, a project from my job, because one of my responsibilities was to create reports for our clients and also for other areas of the company. And in order to make these reports I had to collect the data from different suppliers and this supplier had a different platform each one. They didn't even have an API. So it was even harder to automatize the, the collection and creation of reports. The process that I was using to make this report was to enter to each platform of our suppliers, download the data, the raw data. This data was in spreadsheets, by the way. And then I had to clean the data cross this information with information from our company and then finally when the report was created I had to send the reports for example in spreadsheets through emails to my colleagues or to our clients so I came up with this solution that I'm about to explain you in a basic level but the core of the solution is the same so you can apply this to your job or to a specific project that you have right now. So let's start. We will scrape uh, Etsy.com, which is a web page for handmade products, basically. I chose the uh, home and living category. And we, we have a lot of data that we, we can scrape here. For example, we can scrape product name, product rating, product price, the seller, this batch, uh, a lot of things. But just to save time, we will be scraping the product name and the product price. So let's start. The first thing we need in order to start doing the scrape is of course the URL. So we just copy this URL and we assign this URL to a constant in our code file. So the constant can be I know, URL to scrape which is very creative name <laughs> and now how do we visit visit or download this page we use the uh, request models if you haven't installed the request libraries before you can just type on your terminal pip install request and hit enter well as you can see here in my terminal it says requirement already satisfied because I have already installed this library but it, it takes five seconds to download all the files so it's pretty pretty fast okay so how do we visit this page well we call the uh, request module with the get function and we pass the URL as a parameter. Okay, what is get? Get like post, pull, delete. Those are HTTP methods. So the direct way to visit a page is just to use a get method. So this is what we are going to use here and exactly here we need to say this response because we, we will be using this response in all our code so let's save this response into a variable called response and okay it's here and what happens if i print the response as you can see i get the response 200 it's not exactly the information that I need. I need this information. I need the HTML text. 
So how do we get this HTML instead of the response? We use the text property. So the response, you print this response to 100, but with response.text, I mean the text property, we can get the result. So before doing this, we will save this response only in a variable but in a file because we can use this file in all our projects. As you will see, we will use that many times, so it's very efficient to just save it in a file in our computer and read it from there. Because if we call the GET request every time we run our code, at least for this specific example, we can get timeout. I know, for example, NC.com can have a timeout logic behind that if we call too many times, we, we will just can get, I know, banned for a minute, I don't know. So just to prevent this, we are going to save all this in our file. So the first thing, uh, we need to assign a file name. Let's call this Bible scrape file name we will call this scrape data html and what what is this scrape data is the name of the file and html is the file extension and why html as i showed here you can see that all this information is in html we need to save this information in the same file extension to not have problems when we read this this data and how do we save this response into this uh, file? Well, we use the uh, open function. This is just a function that is going to help with, with writing all the information inside this file. So, which parameters we need to pass? Okay, first we need to pass the file name. Okay, this file name. And then we need to specify the mode the mode we need now is the write because we need to write the response to this file so we just use the w key and we will call all this text that i'm highlighted i will call all this f because you just do not repeat every time all this i will just use the f letter so, now I write the response. So what, what happens here? As you can see, if I run this code, I get an error. Because if you remember, when we print response, we got only response 200. And this is not a string. We need a string. And as I said, the string, the string, which is all this, is inside the text property. Instead of here writing response, we will write response.text. And let's see what happens. If we run this code, we have another error. I have done this in purpose because I want you to be prepared for the errors that you can get. Also to understand how this scrape works. As you can see the error here says that charmap codec can encode the characters, this character. Okay, why this happens? Because we forgot to specify the encoding of the file that we are creating. And uh, how do we do that? Okay, it's just another parameter inside the open function. So we add the encoding parameter and we use UTF-8 encoding. If we run again, it should work. Okay, it looks like it worked because we didn't get any errors. And just to be sure, we will open the file we just created. We can go from here, here on the left side, you see the scrape .py, which is uh, the, the uh, file we are typing our code 
and then in the same directory we have the scrape data HTML which is the file we save. So we open this uh, Unify Explorer we double click and yes it works. As you can see when we open the file it's like a screenshot the time that we call the request because if we call again it will probably change okay so it's very similar to the live website that we visit at the start it's pretty similar and this file is the one that we will be using all the time in our project now we can close this because we have already saved the file so we can just call it from our computer as you can see it's not a URL is more like a file direction of on our computer and now that we have saved this file we don't need to request the URL anymore because we can use this file to apply all the functions and methods that we are going to to need to scrape the data I will show you so we comment this line of code which is response and also we come in this because we have already saved the file so now the the next step is to get all this information as I said we are going to get the um, product name and product price okay so we first need to import beautiful soup which is very useful uh, library to scrape uh, data from from HTML files. So, how do we call this? Import for soup. Beautiful soup is inside the VS4 package. So, we say from VS4 import beautiful soup. I think I will write it. Yes, with uppercase. We need to assign all the data inside this file into a variable that has the beautiful soup method so how do we do that let's call beautiful soup we call, we call the beautiful soup and we pass the file but how do we pass it's very similar to what we did when we were writing the text now we are not going to write, we are going to read with open the same scribe, scribe file name and instead of writing which is W we will be reading which is R and we keep the encoding parameter to not have the error that we had at the start also. and then we need to First, this information we need to tell beautiful soup what kind of file is this and this is a HTML file so we write the uh, HTML parser parameter okay beautiful soup here is going to transform all that is inside this file to better and faster uh, get the information that we need so we assign a variable name to this to all this to not be writing all this every time that we we need to call the file so we just call it doc how do we find let's say the product name okay. we right click for example the product name and we click inspect and we see that this this product name which is called Father's Day gift and something it's inside h2 tag so let's first list all the h2 tags we call let's see h2 uh, tags equals doc which is the document here we use the final function so this final as its name says, is going to find all the tags, all the information that meets the criteria 
that we pass in their parameters. We need to pass, for example, in this case we are going to just list all the H2 uh, tags. Okay, what happens if I print H2 tags? Let's see. Okay, when I print H2 tags, as you can see here, uh, let's also print the length of H2 tags to know how many elements we have. Okay, we have 54 H2 tags, and well, the first one is find something you love, the, this, this, the title. But as you can see, we don't need this find something you love title, we need the, only the, the product names. The next one is Father's Day gift, which, yes, it's that's correct. So let's count how many products are here. Here we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. 12 times 4, it's 48 products, but we are getting 54 H2 tags. So there are 6 H2 tags that we don't need. One of them is find something you love. Yes, of course, there is a lot of information that we don't need. So how do we filter this? Let's clear the output. And how do we filter? Let's inspect. The inspect tool is your first friend when you are scraping. So let's say the tag is H2, but if we see this H2 has a class, and if you see the next product name, it also has the same class. So we can infer that all the H2 tags that have this class are product names. Let's prove that. First, let's save this class in a variable. Okay. A class of product names. Okay, let's write only in one line of code. Okay, how do we filter? It's very similar to the function that we use to find all the H2 tags. So instead of writing this, we'll add some information here. Okay, as I said, find all we'll find all the the results that meet this criteria. So we need to filter the class. We add the comma, we add the parameter a class, and this class is going to be this class, class product names. Okay, now it's going to find H2 tags of this specific class. So let's see what happens. I will just comment this. I will copy this here. I will comment this because we are not using that anymore. And uh, let's see what happens. Remember that we had 48 products, which also we need 48 product names. Okay, let's see. Uh, here it says, okay, 48. As you see, Father's Day gift, create your own vinyl Bible bearers yeah it's we got all the product names so that's the game that really good so now we have the names so we just come in this we keep this line of code just to use in the future we call it product names okay we save this okay now we need to find the product price we do the same steps, right click inspect and as you see it's not a H2 tags like product names, it's now a spam tag. So let, let's do the same. Let's I will copy this. Now spam tags dot find all spam. 
and also let's print the length just to know that we are getting the correct amount of results it should be also 48 results so let's run the code <laughs> we have 1622 results okay this of course is not okay so let's clear the output and let's be more specific as you see here again it has a class the class is currency value so we will specify this class to filter the results and see what we get so in class product prices equals currency value currency. okay let's add the class parameter class product prices okay let's see how many results we get with 65 okay now it's better but as you see we are getting 65 which is a lot uh, because we only need 48 and why is it 65 okay the first result is 27 and 50 which is okay the second is five dollars which is okay the third one is 19.99 which is also okay this then 6.99 and 28.24 which is also okay and then we have 44.99 which is not the price of this but is the retail price of this so we don't need the retail price we only need the product price i mean the price that you are going to pay that someone is going to pay to buy this product we don't care is if it is 45 a thousand a million so we need to inspect this price to see what is different from the real price so if you see here it also has the same class currency value that's why we are getting this in our results and let's open this let's open this see as you can see they are very similar very very similar a span class currency value and then currency symbol and the real price also has currency value and currency symbol and it's inside a span another span tag both are inside another span tag but if you see if we go one level above i mean go to the parent tag let's say the retail price is inside a p tag with this class and the real price it's inside also a p tag but with a different class so when it's not easy to filter the information you can go with the parents above because you will get to a point that you find um, something specific that is different from the the tax or the the values that you need in this case for example we need to specify the p tag with a different class the same example like h2 but now is a p is a p tag so let's do that okay and let's call this class first i will name the class or real price which is the price that we need we need this and the class of the retail price retail price which is the one that we don't need okay and we don't need this so how do we filter first i will use the same logic uh, like span uh, like h2 okay for example what happens if i do this p tax equals dog dot find all p the p tag and the class is 
the class that we need is this class real price okay so what happens okay I will comment this because it will just fill our, our output let's see how many p tags we get we get 48 so what what do we do here okay let's compare let's compare the uh, our results with the HTML file okay we get 27 and 50 we will just go directly if there is a 44.99 value 44.99 value yes we still have this and why this happens because when we filter this class as you can see this this retail price is inside this p tag so we are just i mean it gets the real price tag but inside it's also the retail price the price that we don't need so we need a way to delete this retail price and only uh, get the the price the the actual price so we use a function of beautiful soup that is called the compose okay first if i print p text we can use this like a list for p let's call it p in in here here so what we are doing here is just a check just result by result we are not going to print like this in in our list so we we need to check if this result has a retail price check one by one so oh i forgot here we are going to use the uh, the p decompose function what does it, what it, does it do okay it means that for every result so this is one result this is one result this for every result we need to decompose so it's like delete this part of the result if we find in our in our list of p tags so here okay it's okay we don't need to delete this because we actually need to keep this so we pass the price that we don't need here so if we find p tag with that means that meet this criteria delete it so let's see what happens let's comment this let's comment this we need I mean now we need to print the result and where is the result of course we need to call this again because here we delete the results and after we delete the results we have the doc file and just filter and we just call again the uh, the p tags to know what we got to check if we deleted the correct um, values or we just uh, doing something wrong so let's call it again p tags equals uh, okay let's check uh, print p tags and to check the length and also the values just to check if it's okay uh, okay it looks like it's okay it's what okay we get also 48 which is okay but let's check if the values are okay okay let's again let's go directly to this 38 and let's find if there is a 44 value where's the 38 okay it's it's here and then it goes to 25 which is this also this means it work 
Now the, the class that we are looking here is currency value. Okay, um, so we how do we add this filter? Now that everything is already filtered, we don't have the, the green prices anymore. So we can just call it again. Okay, instead of doing this real price, we only use this to check if it was okay. Now we can replace this with the class specifically of the price. Okay, we will comment this and we will print this again and the class of product prices. And remember that this class is not of a P tag, it's of a span tag. So we call this length just to check and okay it should let's see what we get 48 uh, values which is okay and we get uh, 27 5 19 38 okay then after 38 we get 25 which is okay and then 29 which is okay so it worked we finally got the product prices that we need okay so now we have the product names and product prices so we need to save this information in a csv file first we will just get the values okay the product names was h2 tax product names was h2 tax and product Product prices is spandex, but as you see here, I will show you. These are the prices. I mean, we don't need a span class currency value. We only need the value. We don't need all this text before or after the the price. We use the text property. When you specify the text property, you are saying I remove all the text and just give me the value that is inside the tag. So let's start with product names. We need to get the value of every item on this list. So how do we use the list? We use the same logic that we use here. I mean, for product, let's say product name in tags into tags and let's print let's just print to check if it's correct product text okay let's comment this because we don't need any more let's see what we get here okay that's a product name as you can see we don't have the tags anymore we only get the values but here we also see that we are getting this space here to the left and how do we remove these spaces we use the function it's it's called strip let's say let me check yes it was strip yeah so basically what strip does is to remove uh, blank spaces blank spaces before and after a string yeah. and we do the same for the product prices no, for p right. We call it this better to to identify uh, easier our variables. We price in spandex. Remember that it was spandex. I print. We will just print just to verify. Let's see. To next. Okay. We don't need this right now. Need skin. 
27 file yes we have the list so we need to save this list we create the list that we are going to save so let's call it product names equals this empty list and products prices also this empty list so instead of printing the values because we we only use print to verify if the values we were getting were okay now that we verify that they are okay we save these values into a list how do we do that we use the append function we use the product names of a typo here product product names dot append we append everything that we printed before all this and we do the same for for here we call this list we call the the append function and we call all this p price text as you can see in the prices we didn't need the strip in the strip so it's already saved just to verify we will print the list of product names and we will also print the list of product prices okay let's see what happens uh, yes is already safe as you see it's like an array it is not properly an array because the difference between an array and a list is that the list you can have different types of data i mean you can have strings uh, integers objects you can have everything inside the list but an array you can only have one type of values you can only have uh, strings or you can only have integers okay let, this is the list of name and this is the list of prices so it's okay and so the next video is going to be about a, how to save this list into a csv and how to upload this csv to amazon s3